Okay, hi everybody. My name is Kenny Wallach. Uh, I'd first like to thank Geared Up for putting this whole uh, get together together. Um, it's really, really great having you guys here. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much. I also like to thank MD for covering uh, this great event. Uh, and I'm really glad that we're all able to work together and put it, you know, a great thing like this. Okay. What I want to do is just emphasize the importance of structure when you're either, you know, here, okay, shoulders level, or if you're turning to the side, you want to have a level, you know, your shoulders level. And not only that, but when you turn to the side, whether it's a side chest, or whether it's a side post from the Z, or quarter turn, the more level you keep your shoulders, and the more, uh, the wider you will look, okay? It's just how it is. I mean, you know, you're turning here, you're up here, as opposed to here, you're at it broadening the shoulder girth, okay? So that's another factor. And like I said, uh, well I didn't say it yet, but I'm gonna say it now. In this sport, okay, a half inch, one inch equals a mile. You broaden your shoulders by half inch, you get the lights and you get judges that are, you know, 15, 20 feet away or whatever they are, it's gonna look, you know, a lot bigger, broader, thicker, what have you, okay? Now, so we'll leave the shoulders alone. Arm position, okay, arm position. A lot of times you'll have the guys opened up and they're riding the motorcycle, okay? They're rowing their motorcycle, okay? Or you have the guys that are standing here like this and they're like this with their arms in. That's not perfect structure, okay? And it's not doing anything to enhance the taper and the overall look of the upper body. Okay, when your hands are like this, okay, in, you're drawing a parallel line to your, to your lat and to your arm. So you're not making your lats stand out enough, okay, because you're having them even with, you know, with your forearm, okay. So when you straighten them out, it will actually enhance the, uh, the taper of your lat because you're comparing it to a different angle rather than, a, you know, a parallel line. Okay, so if you look at pictures, okay, you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Um, for, you know, guy here versus here. Now, structurally speaking, you don't want your, your eyes, you don't want the judge's eyes going in. If you're opened up nice and wide and you're bringing it in, it collapses you, it brings your body in, you lose that perimeter that's going to give you that illusion of size and width, okay, that the lights are going to help you with, okay? You bring it in, the eyes go out, and then they come back in. If you keep them opened up, now you look big, and you stay big, okay? And you have a position of your arms that's gonna enhance your back, okay, and your table, and everything else. Also, when you have your arms coming in, you lose your, you lose your arms in the shot, you lose your shoulders in the shot. So what you wanna do is stay nice and open, forearms at 90 degrees, okay? The easiest way to do this is keep your arms limp, open up and you're in position, okay? And then you just tense it up, okay? But the importance of the arms at 90 degrees to the forearms, 90 degrees to the floor, will make a world of difference in the structure and the look of the pose. Not to mention the fact that it looks really professional. As far as this is concerned, you open up like this, you lose everything. You lose your shoulders, you lose your arms, you lose your chest, okay? What, to expose this? But then you create all this space, okay? and you lose the illusion of having a full look and really high lats, okay? So keep it down, keep it natural looking, keep it structurally pleasing, okay? And you'll get a lot further. And that will hold true with whether you're doing a quarter turn, okay? Okay, a lot of times you'll see a guy like this, or you'll see a guy like this, or you'll see this shit where guys will come across this way, okay? And they think, it's not a side chest shot, guys. Okay, it's a quarter turn. So when you're here and you're open up and you have your forearms coming across and you have your back shoulder forward, that's what's going to give you your structure. That's what's going to give you your taper. Okay, and that will give you the girth and the width because you're bending out that quarter, that that back shoulder, and not closing it in like this. Okay, it's all about again. You want to keep the perimeter big when you're on stage. Okay, so to hit a, a quarter turn shot like so. Okay, is what's going to keep you nice and big, thick. 
Okay, it's all about bidding, it's all about size, it's all about thickness, we're bodybuilders. That's what we're here to show. As much of that as we possibly can. And to close it off, or to close it off, okay, it's just short selling all that hard training that you put into it. All the diet and all the cardio and everything else involved with being, okay? With the back shot, okay? Same thing, and again, this is whether you're a physique guy or a bodybuilding guy, okay? Okay? You see this all the time, okay? You have these guys who are like this, who are sitting like this. Again, it takes away the structure, it takes away the aesthetically pleasing look that you're trying to create, okay? And it's taking away your development. Keep the arms down, keep those arms, you don't want to go too far out because again, if you're too far out and you have all this space in between your arm and your torso, you're completely taking away from the width of the body. You're taking away from your laps, okay? Because there's no way that you're going to have an impressive full look with your arms out here, okay? The look comes fuller when you're in, okay? And again, just look at pictures and you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Not to mention the fact that when your arms are here, okay, you're also taking away from your lower lap. When you're here, when you're opened up, now you can incorporate lower lap. But these guys are coming up so high, their lower lap disappears and they get a little bit of here. And I just don't get it. Not only that, but when you take your arms out of the picture, you miss all, you lose out on all that inner tricep. Okay? You lose out on the rear delt. You just, I can go on and on of why not to do that. You know, we're limited to so just keeping it base arms. Don't bring your arms out too far. Just enough where it looks, you know, natural looking. And again, the more natural you feel and pose, the better it's going to look. Okay? A lot of people put themselves in an awkward position which just looks completely unnatural. And guess what? The pose looks, doesn't look great or good at all. Yeah. All right? So that's, those are the few things that I wanted to touch on as far as basics on what not to do on just something as basic as that. Um, as far as leg positioning is concerned, the main thing is, again, you want to keep it structurally perfect, okay? A lot of guys have a tendency to make themselves bow-legged on stage, okay? They'll keep their feet too far apart, they'll bow their knees out to get the quad separation, and then all of a sudden you've got all this imperfection downstairs. There's no need for that, man. There's no need to that. You bend your legs too much to, for the sake of widening your legs, okay? You're going to wreck the structure and it's going to take away from your leg shot. So all I, all I generally do is I work with people, I normally go at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock stance with the feet, okay? With a, with a slight unlocking of the knee, okay? Because what that will do is, obviously, it brings out more sleep. Everybody knows that. I'm not saying anything crazy, okay? But unlock the knee, okay? And just let it sit. The main thing is about a, a, a front shot, okay, is you always want to keep the inner thighs touching. Okay? That's the key to having a nice, full, wide-based look. The minute you start seeing space and, or light in between the legs, you're going to start, you're going to make the legs look smaller. Okay? And you lose that, that width, you lose that compactness of a great leg shot from the front. Also, what I, what I recommend too, if you're going to hit a shot, to, if you don't have that great of a sweep in your quad and you need a little bit of help, very simple, just shift your weight slightly. That will enhance the sweep of your quads. Okay? And it'll enhance the inner thigh. The inner thigh, you gotta understand, guys and girls, the inner thigh is one third of the leg. And it's not shown enough on stage. Okay? Everybody's putting all this emphasis on the quad sweep and the quads and the snap, but they're neglecting the inner thigh. And the inner thigh is what gives it that powerful look. Okay? So if you keep your inner thighs touched, and you kind of give it a little nudge and bring it forward with a little bit of a glute contraction to have it pop, you're looking at a significant size increase in your, in your legs. Don't neglect the inner thigh when you're posing. Okay, it makes a difference between a nice, full, nasty, gnarly leg to something that's just mediocre. Okay, so always keep that in mind when you're practicing posing. Inner thighs touching, pop the glute a little bit and that'll enhance the inner thigh when you're hitting it. And not only that, but it, it makes your legs so much wider that makes it really impressive. And that's during the front lat spread and the front double bite. Okay? Um, another thing I see that are, that's very common is the arms when they're hitting a, an arm shot, 
the elbows are up high. Okay, a lot of hit their, guys hit their elbows up high or some of them hit it too low. Always please remember, keep your upper arms level to the floor, okay? Because it enhances the, the vertical look of the arm, okay? You're gonna have a nice dip in your tricep, you're gonna have a nice rise in your, um, in the bicep. Um, and it enhances the arm. You could lose inch, you could lose inches on your arms just by keeping your elbows too high or bringing them too, too low. Secondly, a lot of uh, bodybuilders have a, uh, an issue by they clamp down on their, on their uh, what do they call this, the, the arm too much when you're hitting a double bicep shot, okay, or a single bicep shot, whatever. By clamping down, you're not allowing the expansion of the arm to go vertical, okay? So when you hit it, try to avoid, try to keep it more at a 45 degree angle rather than clamping down on it because the 45 angle will allow the tricep to dip, okay? Am I getting ahead of myself too much? I think I might be. No, I think I'm all right? Okay. Um, again, and, and I'm just trying to cover a lot of ground and try to keep it you know, as like absorbing as possible. So just bear with me if I get a little out there. Um, and that's one of the main things on a front of bicep. Um, the same thing, or another thing I want to emphasize on an upper body shot that a lot of people don't do is they have a tendency to sink their rib cage, sink their chest. They're not allowing for expansion. And the only way, you gotta remember, there's only two shots that you don't expand your ribcage on, okay? Um, the, uh, uh, the tricep shot and the ab shot. You have to sink the ab shot. But a lot of other people are, are just sitting there and not sitting on it. I mean, they sit on the ribcage. They're not expanding. And again, this is bodybuilding. We're trying to look as big as we possibly can without creating our torsos to look like they're a mile long. Okay, and that's another people think too. They lean back too much and it really extends the, the, uh, the torso. The trick is, is to lift your rib cage up so you get full expansion from the chest up and your lats, but you don't want to lean back and have your torso look long because if your torso looks long, then it's going to shorten your lats, it's going to shorten your chest, and you'll make sure it looks small. Okay, so the trick is to stay upright, okay, and don't lean back. If you lean back, you take yourself out of the light. Stay upright, lift your rib cage, and then expand, and you'll see a major difference. But don't lean back, and always keep mindful of your uh, torso lengthening when you practice. Okay? Because it's not so much it, it's not so much hitting the pose. It's more like recognizing your faults when you're looking in the mirror. Recognizing what is wrong with this picture. What is wrong with this picture? Okay? Then, okay, oh yeah, my mind looks, I look short and shallow, rather than here, pop. So, it's to know what to look for when you're practicing, okay? Once you know what to look for, that's going to make the process a lot easier. And that's what I'm trying to come across to you guys. It's not necessarily how to hit the pose correctly, because there's, there's no really one right way. I mean, like I said, one size fits all for general, but for specifics, what I'm teaching you is the one size fits all on the techniques and stuff, okay? Um, so that's really it as far as, you know, um, like the most obvious things to look for without getting too detailed. Thoughts on maybe your quarter turn, side shots, thoughts on twisting? Yeah, I covered, yeah, I covered that. Basically, what I did basically was I said to, when you're hitting your quarter turns, keep your shoulders level. I don't want to see any of this and I don't want to see any of that. As long as you keep a nice wide perimeter and you keep your shoulders, I mean, the forms at 90, 90 degrees and you keep the shoulders level, okay? You don't want to over torque to make yourself look flat on this end. Right. But you don't want to over torque to make yourself look like a, a side most muscular either. So it's staying relaxed, keeping the shoulders level, popping that, that elbow a to keep your arms at 45 degrees, I mean, about 90 degrees, and you have one hell of a quarter turn. Okay. The other thing that I made, that I noticed a lot with bodybuilders and uh, men's physique guys is the, the back. When you're hitting a back shot, guys, no more leaning back, please. The leaning back thing will crush your back shot. Okay. There's so many things that can go wrong when you're leaning back on a shot. You have to realize one thing: that that light above you is your best friend up there. Okay. It's your best friend. And if you're going to lean back and take your back shot out of the light, you're screwed. Okay? Not to mention that when you do lean back, 
Okay, first of all, let's get over, let's get rid of the myth first. Let me go over the myth. For years, there, you know, it said, well, you gotta lean back so the judges can see you directly. You gotta lean back so you so they can see your back shot. That's a bunch of garbage. The judges are professional, okay? They know, they can see you. You don't have to angle it in for them to see you. They see perfectly up there, okay? When you lean back, a lot of things happen. A lot of the pros that I've been working with, you know, we fix that and their back shots are night and day, night and day. Even, well, anybody I work with, I keep their back straight. And here's why. Number one thing is, the number one thing, in my opinion, when you lean back, you lose your lower lats, okay? You lose that sweep from the ass up. You lean back, all this contracts. Everything contracts. You lean back, you lean back, you turn to the judges. Meanwhile, all this lower lat disappears. It disappears, okay? There's nothing worse than having a lower lat that could be sweeping from your ass out a mile wide to coming straight up because you're contracting because you're leaning back. Everything contracts. So that's the number one thing that, that can happen. Number two, you don't need back wrinkles in your back. You don't need any of that shit, and it's, it is potentially. I don't care how dry you are. You lean back, you're creating wrinkles at some point, okay? And you're going against a guy who's dry as a bone as well, who's sticking outright, whose erectors are ripping through, okay, with no wrinkles. You're gonna get beat on your back shot, you know, as long as everybody's really, you know what I'm saying, on a pro level, it's that close. So avoid any of that. You don't need that, okay? And third, in my opinion, it looks unprofessional, okay? It just doesn't look good. You're leaning way, way back, and again, straight up, you're gonna have the structure that I, that I was talking about, and not only that, but I guess the first and foremost, it's gonna keep your back in the light. You're not gonna take yourself out of the light because the light is up there. So if you put yourself in a position where you're not going to cast any shadows over your detail, you're going to, again, you're, you're hurting yourself big time. So when you hit your back shot, okay, please stay upright. Okay, please stay upright. And it's the same thing when you're doing a front shot. If you're doing a most, uh, what do you call it, say, uh, a front, thank you, a front last break and you're leaning back, guess what? You're taking yourself, with that light, it's gonna hit you direct. You're not casting any shadows, and you're gonna lose your depth. You're gonna lose that thickness, okay? So not only are you making your, your torso a mile long, but you're taking yourself and making yourself looking flat. You're taking yourself and you're making yourself look shallow. You're taking yourself and you're making all this stuff that you built short, and you know, shorter, okay? Um, everybody needs a back mirror, okay? It's imperative you need a back mirror. So many people do not practice with a back mirror. When you're home, you go to any store that you can buy one of those long mirrors that you put back in the, of a, whatever they call it, a door. You put it off to the side, you angle it, and then you watch yourself doing your back shots. Okay? You need it. There's no, I mean, if you're practicing, you know that the mirror is that much you need it for your front shots and side shots then why the hell would you get a mirror to see your back shots? And it happens all the time, man. Even when I'm working with people, did you get a back mirror? Oh, not yet. What? And that's a requirement when I work with people. They need to get a back mirror. I don't want, I don't want none. Okay? And I can tell if they don't, because they don't get a back shot right after I teach them. All right? So let that be kind of an, uh, an important thing for you guys. Get a back mirror. Side shots. Side chest shot. Oh. Okay? A lot of people are very, very uneven and very scrunched and closed in when they're doing a, a side chest. And you're giving up, you're, you're giving up easily five to 10 pounds on a, on a side chest shot because you're not opening up. That's the key ingredient that I found that most people are doing wrong is not opening up from the side. And I mean at any level, okay? Uh, so what I would like to do is really, really, really emphasize not only do you keep your shoulders level for, like I said before, increasing the girth and the width of the pose and increasing the thickness, but to here, it's just structurally perfect. Now, I'm gonna get into the legs later. Let me hit the first, the up shot, uh, the waist up shot. The arms obviously are a very important part of the side chest. What you wanna do is you wanna keep your arm at a 90 degree angle. You want your upper arm 
to stay here, okay? 90 degrees to the floor, but create the up 90 degree angle here, okay? I don't want this, okay? Because that's going to make you look all scrunchy, uptight, and you're going to lose all your size, okay? You also don't want to go too low, okay? A lot of people are hitting the side chest shot uh, in a way where it's going to really hit their intercostals. Um, the intercostals will be shown during an ab shot, okay? You're not going to get expansion if you're going to be here and you're going to try to sit and you're going to sit on your intercostals. Where's the expansion? You're not, you're losing size, ladies, everybody. You're losing size. Keep it underneath your rib cage. Keep that hand underneath the rib cage, keeping the arm at 90 degrees, okay? So you can accentuate your arms and your shoulders, okay? Okay? So if you're doing here or you're doing here, you're not getting either one of those. But 90, yes. So let's just keep it there for now. Another key ingredient is to, like I said, open it up. Make sure that when you're hitting that side chest, that that back shoulder shows, okay? There's nothing worse than hitting a side chest and having it be incomplete looking because you're not bringing that back shoulder over. You've got to make the, sh the picture complete, okay? If you're posing here and you're doing this, and you see it all the time, or you see this shit, right? Okay? That's not completing the picture, and it's not showing structure. I've seen guys do this all the time because they want to angle it down so the judges can see it. Once again, they see it. There's no need to put yourself in a, in a shitty position that's going to take away from your physique for the sake of angling it down. Okay? So keep it, whoa, keep it straight and structured. Because now, by keeping it out there, you're looking, you're keeping your, your, your side chest wide. You're keeping it thick. You lift up the rib cage, and that expansion is going to add size to you. Okay, it's going to create the illusion of being really, really expanded and looking bigger. Okay, um, so the other thing is, so people do is they, well, like I said, the shoulders up thing too. You know better than that now. Just don't over rotate. A lot of people over rotate, and they lose the width and the, the thickness of the shot. So my main thing is, you're here. You turn to about a 45 degree angle with your chest and then lift and hold, okay? Keeping the arm at 90 degrees so it gives you the full, uh, the full look at the arm. You're not turning the arm away to take your tricep out of shot. Keep it at 90, expand, and let the full width of the arm show, okay? Not to mention the fact that it'll keep the shoulders in play too. Um, <clears throat> 45 degrees with the chest, expansion, don't lift up, stay relaxed looking, and you're good. Legs. The hamstring is probably the most important part of the whole leg shot, okay? Because the quad is there, okay? The quad is going to be there, it's going to be shown, but not everybody shows their hamstrings to balance out their quads. I got guys that have quad, uh, hamstrings hanging down to the damn calves, but because they don't know how to show it, it looks like a normal, like a regular leg, if that, okay? Here's the key to doing a, an inner thigh shot, uh, a hamstring, hang shot because it has to hang, okay? So you got this nice sweep coming out, you got a flat hamstring. The number one thing is never flex your hamstrings during uh, a side chest shot because all it does is it shortens the hamstring and it flattens it, okay? Now again, everybody has different genetics, but if you're flexing it too hard, I should say tighten and flex are two different things, okay? If you flex the hamstring, that's what will happen. If you tighten it, then sure, it'll remain hanging a little bit and you'll get the detail. Okay, you don't want it just completely hanging with nothing going. Now, if you do tighten it and it does shorten and it does flatten, then leave it alone. Let that, let that thing hang. Because there's nothing more impressive than seeing a nasty, gnarly hamstring hanging off your quad that's almost touching your, your calves. Okay? So, here's how to do it. It's all about the inner thigh, everybody. It's all about the inner thigh. A hamstring shot from the side drill about the inner thigh. What you're going to do is you're going to bring that foot forward. Now, I'm sorry everybody heard, oh yeah, bring your knee over, bring your knee over, bring your knee over. And that's cool. That's cool. But here's a little bit further beyond it than just putting your knee over or wrapping your knee because you hear that shit all the time. Take your inner thigh and you take that back leg, whether you're doing it this way or this way. Take the back leg and you keep that thing straight as, straight as an arrow. Okay? Then, with that, then you just catch it. Now you can drag it and feel the inner thigh catch, or if you're more in tune with your muscle, mind, with your body, just put it, have the inner thigh catch, press it against that back leg, let it hang, 
okay? And then you just bend that back knee into the back. Because you don't really want to show any space, okay? It doesn't, it has, it loses its compact look when you're showing space and stuff. So hit, pop that back knee into it, squat down a little bit just to give it a little bit more girth this way, and then you nail the shot. You don't want to lose that hand, okay? If you're squatting down too much, and that's another thing, don't squat down too much. You'll see it. If you squat down to where you're just seeing enough of the hamstring, right there, because if you get squatty, it takes away from the pose. Don't get squatty. Just hit, shift, in, and bang, okay? Always set it, um, what do they call that? From the, what do they call that? Feet up. Work from the feet up. And you hear that all the time also. Catch that hamstring though. Make sure you practice it in the mirror. Make sure that you're getting that, in that feel, okay? Inner thigh, push against the back leg, pop the back knee in, squat a little bit to look the way it's supposed to look, and you'll see it because everybody's in there is different. Just don't do too upright because you won't get the, the sweep. Squat a little bit till you feel really see that sweep, and then nail the rest of your shot, okay? And that's going to be the same thing for the side tricep, okay?